I must thank you all for the opportunity to participate in this NGO briefing. And I must thank the rapporteurs for uh, the wealth of information and the lucidity with which they presented the results of the, their discussions. It's been very informative, obviously well prepared, and I'd like to congratulate all those who put it together. And it should be very helpful to all of us as we get ready for the high-level meeting of next week. I know that this session is restricted to NGOs rather than to the general public, so I'll confine my remarks to the, my perception of the role and actions of the NGOs at this beginning. Civil society is mentioned several times in the political declaration, and the declaration recognizes the need for a whole of government approach as well as a whole of society effort, and refers specifically to the contribution to be made by relevant stakeholders and includes civil society among them. The role of civil society is spelled out in the section on commitments, in relationship to the control of risk factors. It is spelled out in terms of the strengthening of the national response, and is mentioned several times in relationship to partnerships. And a call is made for strengthening the NCD-related NGOs at the national and regional levels but no mention is made of the international NCD-related NGOs. And that's perhaps an omission. And I understand that the reference to partnership which the SG is to propose must, will, and must include civil society as well. I have mentioned on several occasions, various occasions, uh, the Churchillian expression, the end of the beginning and not the beginning of the end, in reference to the high-level meeting. But this afternoon, I wish to deal precisely with the formulation I've been assigned and address the importance of a beginning. As for many of us, this month will indeed represent the beginning of a new phase of the efforts to prevent and control NCDs. This is the dawn of a new NCD era. And I will attempt to address this beginning, this new dawn, and not dwell on the tremendous efforts that have been made by so many, including several in this room, to get us to this stage. The high-level meeting represents the end of phase one. Now we must begin a new one. I could spend these few minutes citing the data on the trends in NCDs. I could speak about the data on the differential burdens of disease, of which we'll hear a great deal in the days to come, but I will not. Because as I prepared for this afternoon, my mind went back to the days of my youth in a small island of Barbados. And it came to me that I was thinking of this beginning in nautical terms, the beginning of a voyage in a ship. And those of you who do not who have not grown up near the sea, will excuse me, because much of my youth was spent uh, near the sea with the sound of the waves in my, my ears. And I asked myself, what would this NGO ship, what it would need as it sets out on this new voyage? What its compass should be? And how it should avoid the rocks and the shoals, the treacherous tides and the tempests, that will buff it. And for these, a good beginning is absolutely crucial. The first thing needed on this voyage is the, to be sure of the legitimacy of the voyage being undertaken. The mandate you have to begin at all. When ships leave port, they have to fill in a large number of forms, of documents. But your legitimacy will not necessarily be written in word version seven or in an Apple Mac. Your legitimacy to begin derives from the magnitude of the problem being addressed and the confidence reposed in you by your many constituents. And on your manifesto as you set out, you will have the signatures not only of the port authorities, not only of the port authorities if you can think of them in terms of the high level political figures, but you will have the mark of almost 300,000 diabetics who need assistance. You will have the mark of the millions of persons with cancer. And you will have the mark of the unsung numbers of those who die in pain and die in poverty for lack of palliative therapy. 
but it will be the missing signatures that are just as important. As, as you set out, you will be missing the signatures of the almost 40 million people who died last year from NCDs. And you will claim legitimacy because you are an integral part of every state. And the state is accepted internationally as a discrete territory with a defined population and a government. And it is acknowledged that there are other legitimate partners beside the government. So you must say it loudly as you set out that you have a role by right. You have a role by right in the management of the people's affairs and a special right in regard to those of our people with NCDs. I like the definition of civil society which says, civil society involves private citizens acting collectively to make demands to the state and to express in the public sphere their interests, their preferences, their ideas, and to check the authority of the state and make it accountable. Second, at this beginning of your voyage, you must know where you are going. Uh, it was Alice in Wunderson, if you don't know where you're going, every wind will take you there. Bill Fagy, an American public health icon, always says that at the beginning of every journey, at the beginning of every venture, one must have a clear idea what that last mile is going to be like. Or shall I say that last knot is going to be like, use a nautical term. I, I, I'm sorry, I think most of us will be in the same boat that we cannot envisage an absolute end to this journey, but I can imagine many ports of call. The journey will not end as there will never be a world free from the NCDs, but there will be a world in which the rectangularization of life will be the norm for most persons. Uh, Persons will defer death and live lives free of NCDs for longer periods. And when death comes, it will not necessarily be nasty, brutish, and short, and it will be dignified. And what I can envisage, we can envisage for 2012 as thinking of the ports of call the ship will make, we can think of 2012 as an early port of call when your agitation will see the formation of the partnership, which I, was not, which I was a bit disappointed not to see in the final declaration. Some of the ports of call for this ship will be, as I've been mentioned here, the G8 summit, the G20 summit, the special session of the UN resolution, the meeting of the, Caribbean, uh, of the Commonwealth heads of government. Those are some of the places which you must make your input. And another port of call will be 2014, when the comprehensive review and assessment will lead to the inescapable conclusion that the new internationally agreed upon development goals will and must include the NCDs. And of course, you will keep constant watch on the countries of the world to see that they comply with the commitments you have made, they have made here. But every good vessel is secure in the strength of its timbers. So you must know the strengths you have, and you must know the strengths you need. Of course, one of your strengths is the justice of your cause. There's little doubt, there's little doubt, it is impatient of debate that the disparities which exist within and between countries are, in terms of NCDs are an egregious manifestation of social injustice. The discrimination against diabetics, and those with cancer, Another NCDs is yet another manifestation of social injustice. Social injustice that it made, is made worse when such discrimination leads to inadequate therapy or worse, no therapy at all. One of your strengths will lie in the numbers of you. And when I hear you speak of the over 1,000 members of the NCD Alliance, when I see the Healthy Caribbean Coalition grow from a tiny seed to an organization that can hold its head with any other region NGOs and can boast of solid achievements in it in so short a time, I am comforted that you have the numbers necessary to make an impact. And one of the other strengths you have is your ability to speak up and speak out, to be the voice of the voiceless, to be the voice of the voiceless before the seats of power and before the seats of influence. And you will point out 
in many occasions that is not lack of political will that impedes progress. It's often lack of political wallet that impedes progress. And another great strength you have is access to evidence, as was mentioned this afternoon. And with the powers of modern communication, you can have accurate evidence to buttress your claims for attention. There will be no source of evidence that is close to you. But the great strength that I leave for last is the strength of unity. It was a stroke of genius for the major NCD NGOs to form the alliance. And what they have done together in such a short space of time, a short space of time is nothing short of miraculous. So when the history of these times is written and the credits given for the high level meeting as the end of phase one and for the foundations of this beginning, the name of the NCD Alliance will be writ large. But even at this beginning stage, I would like you to accept some immediate responsibilities. I would ask that you undertake to disseminate the, the declaration widely. At the Washington Post the other day, when I spoke about this, and I said I would like to see this declaration is so, uh, distributed so widely that when I went into the washroom at Miami airport, I would see a, a copy that raised quite a bit of a laugh. But, but more seriously, not necessarily in the washroom of the Miami airport. I would ask that you disseminate this declaration with a message of pride in what has been done so far. And I would ask that you pay no attention to the naysayers and the Cassandras and those persons who would wish to see the glass as three quarters empty. You can justify that pride. To have got to this level of political attention in a couple of years is a magnificent and tremendous achievement. And I hope you distill the commitments into a more manageable document and ensure that every one of your constituents knows them and knows what they entail. And I hope that armed with these documents, you will approach the decision makers who will be here and those who are not and ask bluntly how they hope to accomplish them. And I would ask you that you do not allow them to hide behind the several insertions of the words like as appropriate that crept into the final declaration. I trust that there are two special groups to which you will pay attention. And one is the youth of your country. I hope you involve them in this exercise and have them place this material in their channels of social communication in a form that they understand. I want to congratulate them again yet for their uh, conference yesterday, in which they displayed what they are doing in this particular area. Not only what they are doing, but how they are doing it. It was a most impressive demonstration. And please do not forget another group of people who, in a sense, have not been mentioned as specifically as they might have been, and I refer to women's organizations. I'm a great believer in the power of women when they band together. And I'm a great believer that health degendered is health denied. And I also must ask that you do not forget the media as they too represent an important part of civil society. In my part of the world, the heads of government say that there's no great social movement that has ever occurred without the participation of five groups. The public sector, the private sector, the non-governmental organizations, the media, and organized labor. And to finish, let me read your wish that I'm offering as you begin this voyage as May your sails always be filled with a fair breeze, and may the depth of the water never be less than your draft. Thank you.